October is National Movie Month, when the best of the newest movies will be shown at your favorite theater. Join the world and share the romance, color, adventure, hilarity, excitement, and splendor that spell movies during National Movie Month. Be here in October. It's National Movie Month. Jim Rex? What's Jim Rex? Would you believe a movie audience guide presented as a public service by this theater's management to help you select your motion picture entertainment? Well, that's what it is. And we urge you to learn these rating symbols and use them as a guide for you and your family. G means suggested for general audiences, all ages. M, suggested for mature audiences, parental discretion advised. R, restricted, persons under 16 not admitted unless accompanied by parent or adult guardian. X, persons under 16 will not be admitted. This seal in advertising indicates that the film was approved under the Motion Picture Code of Self-Regulation. Everything you ever wanted in a movie, in one movie, you can get high, get low, get flipped, get a glow, get hot, get bizarre, get a plane, get a car, get out. Get in. Get religion. Get sin. Get caressed. Get undressed. Get molested. Get arrested. Evening, officer. But most of all, get crazy! Get it while it's hot. Get it if you're not. Come and get it. Get crazy! What Animal House did to college, an airplane did to flying, Get Crazy does to rock and roll. Get Crazy, coming soon to a theater near you. comes a time in every girl's life when she knows she's not a little girl anymore. Inga, at 16, at her coming of age, learns everything there is to know about love. I like to be alone, like you, to do just what I want. This new dress is really something. I wonder what Mother would say if she saw you like this. Probably wouldn't like it. There comes a time when she has new interests, a new awareness in her mind, a new feeling in her body. What smells so good? Like it? It's nothing dangerous. If you would like it, it's very relaxing, you know. This is my sister Inga. You know, Bjorn is a painter. Where's Captain? I don't know. Captain? Bjorn will be a very good influence on you. You know, he smokes, he drinks, and he even... There comes a time in every girl's life when she knows she has so much to give. You have a great thing going, playing naive and innocent, but really you're a little slut. That's not true. Excuse me, what do you call it? Good night. I'm sorry, I acted like a child. There comes a time in every girl's life when waiting and wanting aren't enough. I don't what do you mean? I don't believe you're for real. What, like this? Did you wear 
church like that? Of course. Everybody look at you. There comes a time in every girl's life when she can't escape growing up. There comes a time in Inga's life when she can't escape being loved. Christina Lindbergh, the girl with them. You've seen her in Playboy, you've seen her in Penthouse. Now starring in Made in Sweden. In an unforgettable weekend in Stockholm, you'll see all of her. There comes a time in Inga's life when she becomes a woman. Made in Sweden. Rated X and then some. Five years we've been playing 15 bucks a night club dates in places like Modesto and Redwood City. And you really think you have a chance to win? We're going to be up there on that stage in the finals. Pinsky, Daniel. Height, six feet. Weight, 150 pounds. Occupation, part-time in a cab. Sorry. Part-time on a stage. Love is why I live. Full-time, on the run. Hey! Man, you sick? Oh. He's wanted. Count of five, Pinsky. Wanted by the police for 78 parking tickets. Yes. This is taxi. And three murders. Ah! Last night I had a chance to clear myself. Now I'm a murderer on the front page. Morning. Wanted by a girl named Amy. That's your good, huh? Forever. Fine, Pinsky. Pursued by just about everyone for a monkey. Get off me! Get off me! Get off me! Get off me! Everybody's killing each other for a monkey? Precisely. You little nutter. You little nit. This ain't no ordinary monkey. One of our men is missing an action. Minsky! Minsky's out there somewhere in no man's land. Cut off from his outfit. Look for Pinsky over a hill. Over Dale. Over every dusty trail. The halls of the Cow Palace to the shores of Sausalito. Men, find them. Who are you? What is this place? Who are those goons out there? Why can't I go? What's going on here? motion picture that shows the world how to succeed in rock and roll without really dying. What does anything mean without love? Gas pump girls are having fun now that school is out and the whole town is there for the making. <laughs> Gas Pump Girls, a motion picture delight when our girls change over a gas station and turn it into a fun station with sounds that will get you dancing while your tank is getting filled. Well, so like no one else in the world. Cause anyway, what's going on here? Don't you need just a teeny weeny bit of gas? I love it. Hey girls! Hey, gorgeous. Can I help you with anything? Yes. Could you hold this for me? Any way you do it, there's gonna be magic to it. I always have so much trouble with these things. Uh, Just what is it you're selling here? Gas. You gonna pump gas in my little old pickup here? <laughs> Would you like regular or super duper? 
Gas Pump Girls, drive in and check them out. Rated R, under 17, not a minute without parent. Jack and Cecil are two of a kind. They like to think of themselves as the last of the plainsmen. What they really are is a half-caste Indian and a misfit cowboy. Two rustlers determined to hustle their share of Rancho Deluxe and grab as much of the action as they can handle. Starring Jeff Bridges, Sam Waterson, Elizabeth Ashley, Charlene Dallas, Harry Dean Stanton. It started as fun, but before it's over, the laughter isn't all that will die. Every cowboy has a dream of having his own Rancho Deluxe. The only thing that's different is how they go about getting it. You breed reckless and violent on a collision course with the establishment. Headed for hell on chopped down hogs. <laughs> Hating each other, but hating the establishment more. Listen, Charlie. We've had enough of your kind of hell. <laughs> you black animal. Yeah, a panther, honky. Black angels, a pack of snarling wolves in a fury of burning rubber and blood. <laughs> Crashing head on with brutal fury, soaking the streets with blood. Don't push me, Chainer. Why not? You push me, you push us, you push everybody. <laughs> Don't play games, huh? A wild bunch of women, untamed and shameless, turning on for kicks. Hey, hey, oh. Black angels grabbing every kick along the way. Yeah, I'm a new shade of black. I'll bust you wide open. You ain't busting nobody, whitey. Thundering hordes of bikers clashing head-on in the most violent bike movie ever filmed. You slumming devil! Black angels exploding out of the slum, slamming into the establishment. Angels soaring across the screen in an unforgettable drama of raging anger. Breaking out on wheels. Danger is their life. Death their destiny. Black Angels, savage, brutal, fierce, don't miss it. American International Pictures. Rated R restricted. Under 17 requires accompanying parent or adult guardian. Film Festival. 48 films were printed from around the world. They were made by the most renowned directors and featured the biggest name stars in entertainment. But look what happened. A film called Jeremy directed by an unknown and starring two actors no one has ever heard of. Not only won a major award, but in fact, was voted the most popular film of the entire festival by the general public. I have a room, a happy tune. Love enough to last me all through the afternoon. I have the New York Times, 14 dimes. Triple Band still in the lead. Two next and favorite city in the 
in a close second and third. If they come into the stretch, that's Triple Ban and Tunic. That's Triple Ban and Tunic. Triple Ban and Tunic as they cross the wire. It's Triple Ban. Does anyone else know you do this? Nope. It's a secret. Good. So I wouldn't tell them if I were you. You know what else I do? What? Promise you won't laugh? I promise. Well, sometimes when I'm walking down the street, I see some guy ahead of me. You know, just any guy. Well, I want to race him. You know, just me and him. I create an imaginary finish line. I call the race in my head. I don't believe it. And they're off. The man in the blue suit has a two-length lead as they come out of the starting gate, and Jeremy Jones is a disappointing sick. On the outside, Jeremy makes his move. At the 16th pole, that's Jones and the man in the blue suit, neck and neck. As they're coming down the long stretch, that's head and head. The man in the blue suit and Jeremy Jones. The man in the blue suit and Jeremy Jones. As they cross the wall. And it's Jeremy Jones. Jeremy, a film with nothing going for it. But the people who love it. Webster is taking off for L.A. He lives to thrash. He loves to compete. But the competition is a killer. Check it out, hooking the dagger. Beautiful girl to club. The music of the Bangles. Animotion, Devo, Meatloaf, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Thrashing. Well, what do you thrash? What do you got? You'd like to be held like that? Yeah, I'd love it. It's not a kid's game anymore. Saturday night in Alphabet City. Gino. Run, 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 walk the street. 
For now, it's only At 19, they gave Johnny the streets and everything on them. Tonight, they want it all back. Remember one thing, Johnny? Nobody's indispensable, you know what I mean? No. No. Trust me. Gina, put the word out, man. The word is you're dead. Welcome to Alphabet City. Go, man, go! If you're not on the way up, you're on the way out. Alphabet City, it heats up when the sun goes down. Alphabet City, starring Vincent Spano. Soundtrack available on Island Records and Tapes. Adam Gaines has a 911 T Porsche. Good looks, a guaranteed future, and as many girls as he can handle. When you're through with the hip and slick of it all. When the good life becomes too good. When the hard things come easy. Then it's time to say so long, shift gears, and head for reality. The world changed for Adam at 6 a.m. Adam Gaines. Gladys' is boy from California. Hello there, Adam. I just said to Jerry... This is my daughter, Jerry Jo. Hi, Adam. Hello. I said, now there's someone your own age for you to talk with on this dreadful afternoon. You're not from Kansas City, I take it. California. Mm. <clears throat> Pharmacy's my field. Semantics and ditch digging. But just what is that now? The semantics? Study of meanings. Meanings of what? Well, meanings of words. Well, why doesn't a young man like yourself, present company accepted, of course, why doesn't he get up off his behind and make a buck? Harvey Gavin. Adam Gaines. Yeah, I see you ain't used to hard work. <laughs> oh, you got yourself one hell of a good job now. Got a job for the summer. Power and light summer crew. You won't like it. That's for men who never went to school. Oh! Oh! Oh, He's up! He's up! He's up! Well, let me tell you some bitch shot. I made you old lady Mavis. I did a hell of a witch away. Get you up! Oh, no, we got a man! Get out of here, Billy! My God, come on! You're different from us. You got brains. And yeah, now you got yourself the ball to go along with it. Look, I don't want to be stopped in one place by somebody's idea of what's proper. I see you and me traveling all across the country Europe maybe a couple of years just go we're two new people all right let's try everything Elijah rise up and take to the road we got a long way to go Teen, get up. For God's sake, teen, snap to it. Your mother made five beta cap at Smith, but I don't think she can make a four minute egg. Not tonight, I'm too tired. Christ, is there anything you can do anymore? Screwing appeal to you. <laughs> Diary of a Mad Housewife. A Frank Perry film with screenplay by Eleanor Perry from the novel by Sue Kaufman. Nine! 
10 days, we are giving a party for 100 people. I would like to see you do one thing to make this party a success. We happen to have a fantastic sex thing. Sex is sex. A lay is a lay is a lay. You really are a smart dame, but sometimes you've got a box full of marbles for a brain. And you're a mean, cruel bastard, and you manage to spoil just about everything. By far, the Perry's best film. Great movie making. Superb performances. New York Times. An important film. Life magazine. You've made love to a million different women, haven't you? Give or take a dozen. A pungent contemporary comedy. Playboy. A beautiful and dazzling piece of filmmaking. Holiday Magazine. Certainly not a love affair. Surpasses the Perry's David and Lisa and Last Summer, L.A. Herald Examiner. Witty dialogue. The biting truth is earthy, refreshing, and strangely satisfying. Cosmopolitan Magazine. You're goddamn right I'm a sadist and you're the perfect willing victim. Blisters the current scene. The best Frank Perry has made. Saturday Review. As usual, you've got everything twisted. What have I got twisted? What have I got twisted? Will be the most shattering film ever viewed by young married couples. Dorothy Manners, syndicated columnist. Adventurers is here. Harold Robbins' sensational bestseller. Now the screen's most incredible entertainment. The Adventurers is here. All of it. All of them. Dax, Sue Ann, Fat Cat, Amparo, the beautiful people, the violent people. Run! These are the adventurers. Searching for passion. Reaching for power. I who made this country great. They envy me in my position in history. I hate you, Dax Do you know that? I've got a present for you. I'm the richest girl in the world. I don't find people. They find me. 500,000 and 5,000 a month is our last offer. It looks so bad for the heir to one of the largest fortunes in the world. To be a bastard. I beg your pardon. You two haven't met. Dax Enos, my husband. Is it true you've made love to every woman in this room? Not yet. When you were a child, you killed seven men with that gun. Like it or not, Dax, you are involved. Nothing has been left out of the adventurers. South America, New York, Paris, Venice, Rome, the Riviera, the glamorous playgrounds, the explosive battlegrounds. This is the world of the adventurers. I trusted you. I would have done anything for you! Someday I shall kill you for this! I'd like to know what it is you really care about. You don't make love to girls. You make love at them. Dax does not feel things like other men. Nothing has been left out of the adventurers. out of 
the adventurers. You know, it takes a special kind of guy to push them big old 18 wheelers down the highway. But they're a tough breed, them dudes. They make a 900 mile run in the blizzard look like a trip to church. Hi, this is Jerry Reed. We just finished shooting a motion picture about some of these good old boys. And before we got through with the ride, well, it got wilder than a can of crap. I play Iron Duke Bork. You can't miss me. I'm the one on the screen with the cab over face. Whoa, whoa, what's that extra $50? What is that? That's for a hurry up on a load. You take that extra 50 and you stick it up where the sun don't shine. And if I wasn't in such a hurry, I'd stick around and assist you. <laughs> now, Peter Pond is my buddy. We call him Rain. He's a lad with wheels in his head and a liking for fancy boots. And pretty little Helen Shaver's pickup. She's the one you boys gotta watch. <laughs> Scared me. Mm hmm. I told you about that little darling, didn't I? What are you doing sneaking around outside? Now, Peter and I play a couple of dudes who had a good thing going once, and we kind of get together again. The best I can remember, me and you used to have a good time. You go take one more ride with the old dude. But the way things are now, a fella get himself killed. <laughs> No. Wait a minute. Didn't need to go hunting for no trouble. We got engraved invitations. Break a one nine, break a one nine. You've got the Iron Duke on a fly from a 1033. I'm being shot at with real bullets. See if you can get on that radio and help me find a bear. A bunch of bears. Hell, I can use that for. Look out, I'll take care of you, Smith. So shift over to the fast lane, brother and sister, and see this story of two throttle jockeys who get into it up to their eyeballs and highballing from American International. Sorrow's back. Zorro, the greatest hero of them all. Thank God for your life, Sergeant. Everyone knows the mark. Everyone knows the mask. Everyone cheers his fame. It's the all-new adventures of Zorro. It's all for fun. And fun for all. Zorro, the spirit of adventure. A mystery in a mask. A legend that lives and fights in the biggest adventure of them all. No danger too great. No escape impossible. Sorrows everywhere. It's all new. It's all fantastic. Sorrow, the most incredible daredevil in the most spectacular action. It's the all new adventure of Sorrow. This is Dublin. This is my cousin Quaxer. He's a man with very special interests. Some men love food, not Quaxer. Some men love liquor, not Quaxer. My cousin, Quaxer Fortune, has a passion for... 
Well, let's just say he picks up where others leave off. This is all about Quaxer and what he did to Dublin. Quaxer! Quaxer? Quaxer? Where's Quaxer? That's Quaxer. That's Quaxer. Quaxer, you. No, are I got something on my mind and I want to talk to you. Now I listen. I have nothing to say to you, Quaxer. You just listen to me. Oh, it was foolish in the first place, the whole thing. Quaxer. I didn't... I... I'm sorry. How do you think of me? Quaxer Fortune found true beauty all over Dublin in small, neat piles. At Cape Kennedy, NASA launched the last of America's deep space probes. Aboard this compact starship, a lone astronaut, Captain William Buck Rogers, was to experience cosmic forces beyond all comprehension. His trajectory was disrupted by an explosion. In the wink of an eye, his life support systems were frozen by temperatures beyond imagination. Ranger 3 was blown out of its planned trajectory. Buck was frozen by elements so instantaneous and perfect that he was fully preserved and living when found by the forces of the Draconian Army and taken aboard the King's flagship, Draconia. Where am I? We asked the questions. Who are you? Captain Buck Rogers, United States Air Force. Who are you? What did he say? Something about a United States. Captain. What is your destination? Who are you? You were aboard the King's flagship Draconia, under command of the Royal Princess Sardala, on its way to Earth on a peace mission. On its way to Earth? I mean, we're not... We're not on. Oh. Give him something for his discomfort. Oh. Are you a real life princess? <laughs> I think we've given our captain a little too much medication. No, no, I feel great. <laughs> and how are we this morning? Great, where are we going? We're going home. Great, where's that? On Earth. All right. I have the strangest feeling I'm going to see Captain Rogers again. Houston Control, this is Flight 711. Put down the back end aboard, so put away the cars. Lucky Buck is back. My kind of town, Chicago is... Practically a foreign language. Can it be some kind of joke? Hey, baby, this is quite a setup. It's Colonel Daring, Commander of Earth's Defenses. Take this barbarian in for interrogation. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Captain Buck Rogers, you are now in the 25th century. I think I will have it right now. What planet? Oh, it's Earth, of course. You returned as your mission required to almost the precise landing area originally programmed into your ship. 
Uh, look, Doc. Uh, I've been through a lot. But there is no way you can tell me that that city out there is anything like Chicago. No, it isn't. There's nothing like Chicago left on Earth. Tell me about the Holocaust. I can't. The council will tell you in time. Look, I lost everything that was important to me. My father, mother, brothers, sisters, a woman I cared for. And until I hear something that convinces me different, they're waiting for me somewhere in time and space right now. By unanimous vote, the council finds for the state. Captain Rogers, you and your representative, Councilor Theophilus, are banished from the inner cities. You will be removed to Anarchia, there to live out your lives as you see fit. Well, I never thought I'd say this, but that place back there is starting to look good to me. I wouldn't start feeling sorry for myself yet. This is nothing compared to what lies ahead. you out on a night like this? Captain, I came to find you at some personal risk. Very ballsy. Very what? Welcome aboard the flagship Draconia. Delighted. This is an unexpected pleasure. I'm Colonel Deering, commander of the third force of the Earth Directorate, and I believe you already know Captain Rogers. I don't believe we've had the pleasure. I think you're mistaken, Princess. I never forget a knuckle. Sir, excuse me. Uh, are you familiar with the uh, uh, rock? No. What are you doing? It's called getting down. It's a little before your time. It frightens you. Nothing frightens me. I'm right, fine. Get down and boogie. It's expressive. It's disgusting. What happens if we come together? We automatically become man and wife. That's an example of your best pillow talk. I think I found your problem.
anyone who can make a girl feel as happy as Patty can can't be all or bad. Jesus. I'm after forgetting the paper round. You know, it wouldn't be so bad if I wasn't such an out Fletcher. That poor woman just wanted to vent her pent on a gent without a cent. <laughs> oh, that's what I like <laughs> about the Irish. Everybody's a poet. That little mot in the pub really was a flower. And a pretty flower should be watered every day. I bet you tell that to all the girls. Love them all. But not in the heart. Blow yourself a kiss in the mirror every morning and it'll last for days. Stuck. Can I help? Oh, oh! I should have worn me pants with the buttons. To think I taught you everything. The hardest working lad in the parish. You seduced my housekeeper. She knows the way to a man's heart. What did you do for an encore? Lay an egg. Can you deny that you placed your hemlock person inside the innocent bowery of that dear gentle woman? Oh, God, don't the Irish ever look inside their trousers? There's no end to it. She's got a pal. A real angel. Oh, Jesus. An angel. Paddy McGuire has one hand on his dreams, one hand on his girls, and one foot out the door. Dear Mom and Dad, I've gone to Chicago to seek fame and fortune. Don't be mad. Love, T.R. Uh-uh, operator. T.S. Traffic accident? Hi, Mom. Nothing. I just called to see how you were. How are you? No, really, nothing's wrong. I just wanted to see how you were. Listen, Mom, how's Dad, anyway? How is he? Oh, Mom, would you please... Don't wake him up. Please don't wake him up, Mom. Would you, would you please not wake him up? Hi, Dad. Have you ever had malaria, tuberculosis, rheumatic fever, heart disease, kidney disease, or any mental illness? No, 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 no. Have you ever been convicted of a felony? Twelve arrests, no convictions. Thank you push the button for the desired floor. Step to the rear of the elevator and... We expect you to think of your desk as your home during the day, so to speak. Just as you wouldn't keep a dirty home, we don't think you should keep a messy desk. Now, look up and down uh, your row, Miss Baskin. That is your row. Hello, T.R.? Yes? Uh, my name is Jack Mitchell. Uh, I've just arrived in town. Uh, Larry gave me your name. Hello, T.R.? This is the living room. Nice. And this is your bedroom. I think two bedrooms is mandatory, if you know what I mean. Listen, what you do is your own business, if you know what I mean. Uh, Larry told me a lot about you. What did he say? He said, when I get to Chicago, I should be sure to look you up. Really? That's a lot to say. T.R. is an absolutely super reader. Really? What do you like best? Mostly Lebanese classics. Nice. I know I'm not so smart, but even I know when someone's making fun of me. You sound like one of those women's liberation people. <laughs> now, a woman should get stimulation, uh, should get stimulation out of a home and children. What do you think, T.R.? I think you're a schmuck. You're making fun of me. Well, I never said you were going to give me such a hard time. You happen to be acting like a blob. I don't understand it. What are you giving him a hard time for? You're absolutely right, Jack Mitchell. I have no right to give you a hard time, especially if Larry never told you I would. No siree, no hard time, not from this cookie. Who the hell is Larry? What's your name? Larry. Larry Moore. What does TR stand for? Thelma Ritter. You're my favorite actress. I try to 
fit in, you know, I really do. But do you know what scares me more than anything else in the world? I'm afraid that if you keep on getting disappointed, you wind up expecting less. <laughs> to the endless interstellar reaches of the universe. An advanced exploration call. A new breed of pioneer must seek out unstable planets and destroy them. Hostage drive sequence begun. Hit it, pin back. of the 21st century planet smashers. Dark star. 20 years in space, one million light years from Earth. Their job is to clear a path for the colonization of space. Back home, back home in Malibu. I used to surf a lot, Talby. I used to be a great surfer. Travel in an infinite universe with mind-melting excitement from beyond the stars. Computer to bomb number 20. Return to the bomb bay immediately. But I have received the operational signal. Because I must detonate. I must detonate. Commander Powell. Commander Powell, this is Doolittle. Can you hear me? Man, what happened, man? Hey. Dark star. They are not lost in space. They're loose. Space and time. Two dimensions we dream of conquering. But perhaps they have already been conquered. Not by man, but a form of intelligence far more evolved and far more powerful. A time walker. The discovery. I simply sealed him alive in a corner touch tomb. The awakening. This was in the coffin. The search. Looks like some kind of wiring schematic. The power. Nobody's that strong. Crystals could be used as transmitters. The cells are multiplying at a rate so fast I can hardly measure it. The confrontation is definitely no longer dormant.
now, our time belongs to him. The story of a journey home. Time Walker. Nothing can stop him, not even time. Hi, Ben Nick. I've been looking all over town for you. We sent Murphy down to Kansas City to see Mary Ann. And this is how they sent him back. What should I do with these, Mr. Devlin? Oh, did you know Murphy? Yeah. Was he a good guy? Oh, yeah, he's a good guy. Then bury him. Lee Marvin and the boys are coming to town. Gene Hackman and his boys are waiting for them. Nick. Mary Ann. You eat guts. Yeah. I like them. Talk now, eat later. Nice to see you in the same old rat hole. You tell Marianne that I'm here. And not to get any fancy ideas about turning me or any of my boys into hamburger. You got it. Lee Marvin, Gene Hackman. <laughs> Together their murder in Prime Cut. Smart. You and Jake, you think you're big men, huh? You walk in anywhere, you take down your pants and I'll take down mine. We'll see who's the biggest man. Why don't we just ask Clara? They tell stories about you now, good tough ones. Did you come here for Marianne, Nick, or me? Marianne. Marianne is freezing things at the ice house. Me and I'm already What do you think of all this, Nick? I think it stinks. This is my country. Yeah. I give it just what it wants. Dope and flesh. Something up the arm. Something to lick around the belly. You have a good time last night? Huh? Lee Marvin. Gene Hackman. Crime Cut. The gangster film that's a cut above. In the great tradition of American classics, we bring you Surf 2, the end of the trilogy. The surf wars continue when a mad genius pollutes innocent surfer youth and the free beaches of America. Do you know how many brain surgeons, nuclear physicists, or Nobel laureates have been surfers? I'll tell you, none. It's a sprawling surf saga of rebellion. Romance. I'm Bob. Adventure beneath boiling seas. A struggle against uncontrolled substances. And a race to the death by freedom fighters protecting your right to surf and the American way. Must be from L.A. Surf 2. With music by the Stray Cats. Boingo Boingo. Split End. The Circle Jerks. The Beach Boys and more. Surf 2. The adventure that dares to trash school, police, parents, the beach itself, and the two greatest American institutions of all time. Don't stop innocent kids from drinking cola and surfing. It's the American way. It's the final confrontation of the Surf Wars trilogy. If you missed Surf 1, you owe it to yourself to see Surf 2. Punks and creeps. Think these guys would be mature enough to take surfing seriously. It's twice the fun of Surf 1. Surf 2. Charles Arthur Floyd was a poor kid from the Pecker Woods who parlayed a little ambition and a lot of ammunition into a successful career in the bank robbing business. Got no way to go. The girls who loved him and the men who hunted him called him Pretty Boy. And 
you can't come home until the day you die. And assorted bad guys. He jumped up and down on it. Up and down. Kicked it. Time Rider, the adventure of Lyle Swan, an off road racer who's way, way off the road. These two men are New York City police officers. They earn $43 a day, risking their lives as cops. Today, they'll earn $10 million, risking their lives as robbers. What is this? It's a robbery. What do you think it is? We want bearer bonds. $10 million worth. Nothing over $100,000, nothing under twenty. Who is they? I swear I don't know. Who called them? Elliot Kastner presents Cops and Robbers, starring Joseph Bologna and Cliff Gorman. 
cops and robbers. comes close. Power. A Sidney Lumet film. Enter the bizarre world of the psychosexual mind. From Carlo Ponti, who brought you Dr. Zhivago, now... Torso. 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 It saturates the screen with terror. Torso. Rated R. Would you come out with me sometime? I don't go out very much. Why not? Well, I get home late most evenings. All right, then. What about a Sunday? Next Sunday. I just told you I don't go out very much. Because of your leg. I was just trying to kiss you. Some women in love will do anything a man asks. Some men will ask anything. I didn't want to, and I don't want to, but there's 500 pounds involved. They want to know about security arrangements, sir. They're not going to do it. But it's so simple. It's really so simple. Nobody's asking you to steal anything, do Why? Ted says the stuff must be worth at least 150,000. We get a third of it. It's impossible. The place is riddled with alarm systems and guards. Suppose I tell them what they want to know. Will you not get involved with it? It's too late, love. Did you know who was married? Now, what are we asking you to do? We're asking you to kill the alarm on the back door and open it. Well, it's simple. Sit down. Leave? No, no, no. Don't upset yourself. Please, please, make them go away. Will you ask them to leave me alone? No. no. Jack, just, just Some women in love will do anything a man asks. Some men will ask anything. Graffiti, the sign of the times. What are you doing with yourself now that you've graduated? Thanks. 
then some travel. No one does it like the teenagers do it. And they do it all in Teenage Graffiti. Lots of cars and all the clothes are white and all the people can fly. I'm not here to steal your food or feel your women. I have a show. Now, the miracle. Cereal! Is there a city? Tell me about the city. What is the city really like? Take me to the city! Maybe gonna have some babies. Do you love me, Randa? We're not animals! We're people! We have to start living like people! We have to be civilized! What's your name? Sidney Miller. I'm Glenn and she's Randa. I haven't seen anyone in 20 years. Uh, it hurts! Oh! She's going to have the baby. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Stars Bay and Polaroid and Palisades Park and Safeway and Rock and Roll and Prince Valiant and the Holland Tunnel and Playboy and Miss January and Nick Jagger. In 1836, he moved like a shadow through the mountains and forests of southern Canada and Montana. Only one white man had ever seen him. His own people, the Blackfoot, were in awe of him. They said he could see like an eagle, smell like a wolf, and run like an antelope. As a warrior, he was terrifying. When his people were dying of smallpox, he stepped out of the shadows and asked the white man for medicine. He got treachery and bullets instead. In revenge, he kidnapped a white girl and boy and in an incredible journey, outmaneuvered a group of mountain men through the high country for almost a year. His name was Winter Hall. And his story was only told around Blackfoot campfires until now. Charles B. Pierce brings it to the wide screen as one of the epic adventure films of all time. Winter Hall, rated PG. Film of the year, all new, totally different. Superman Chu, master of kung fu. He's super cool. Super quick. Super deadly. Superman Chu. His body a lethal weapon capable of destroying anything and anyone who gets in his way. Action to blow your mind. Blows to leave you breathless. 
kicks defying physical limitations. Superman Chu, master of kung fu. You think I have such a short life? <laughs> that I don't know. But you know what they say. Courage makes heroes. <laughs> They sent their best men to get him, but their best was not good enough to tangle with Superman Chu. If you haven't seen this kind of action film before, you can't afford to miss this one. Even if you've seen the others, you owe it to yourself to see the best. Superman Chu, master of kung fu. See it to believe your eyes. From Capital Productions, rated R for Righteous. Boot Hill is where death comes quick. Boot Hill is where death comes hard. Boot Hill is where death comes often. Because in Boot Hill, death comes in two colors. Terence Hill is the man with no name, and Woody Strode as the gunfighter. Are the colors of death in Boot Hill. good bait for my trap. That's the only reason for me to try to keep you alive. Boot Hill, filled with the violence of the West. Victor Buono as honey. He owned the town. Noise or not? Take as many men as you need and do whatever you want. But at tomorrow's meeting, I don't want to hear anything more about those people. Lionel Stander as mummy saves his friends and buries his enemies. I'll take that bullet out of him, all right? I'll cure him. I'll make him well. And then I'll run out, borrow a gun, and shoot him in a place it will take. Eduardo Cianelli as the commissioner. He wrote his own laws. You see now, Judge, we... Don't call me judge, sir. No, Your Honor. And not even your honor. Bud Spencer as Hutch, killed for a town that didn't care. Pooh! <laughs> you see that? Look at the mess we got ourselves in. I told you we were wasting time with this bunch. Not even an earthquake will get them moving. <laughs> There's one other thing to do before day comes. What? you realize if they don't listen to me, they'll all end up six feet under. And so will their wives and their children. Because after Finch takes care of those four idiots, he won't spare anyone. This is Boot Hill, where nobody died of natural causes. Film Ventures International release, filmed in Technicolor and Technoscope. And now it's Richie and Spiro. See the hilarious antics of America's funniest comedy team of the decade, Richie and Spiro. 
in the absurd fast-moving motion picture, Another Nice Mess. You are the leader of the land. My fellow Americans, as you know, I am a great supporter of the motion picture industry. Make no mistake about that. But I urge you not to see a picture called Another Nice Mess. It ridicules the American way of life. But more importantly, Another Nice Mess is a film that attempts to make buffoons, make buffoons out of this country's leaders. Now you run it up the pole, and I'll salute it. You know, Richie, I like the idea of us being vice president and president. Well, here's another nice mess you've got me into. Does this mean you won't let me be vice president anymore? I'll give you ten seconds to get me down. What? Yes, it's Richie and Spiro. Meet America's funniest comedy team of the decade. Richie and Spiro. In the outrageously absurd motion picture, Another Nice Mess. Join the hilarity in the White House. Eleven. Twelve. <laughs> See Another Nice Mess, starring Rich Little and Herb Volan, written and directed by Bob Einstein, produced by Tom Smothers and Jonathan Hayes, a fine film's release, rated PG. Parental guidance suggested. You blew it. This radio classic of the 30s was the birth of the blue. They've happened in the news. The rumor that the president would veto the bill is reported to have come from a high white horse souse. You knew it the moment you blew it. They've also happened in weather reports. And that's the weather report from the International Airport here at Anchorage, Alaska. Now I'll take a leak out the window to see if it's freezing outside our studio. You blew it, oh, how could you do it? Sportscasters have been the victims of bloopers, too. Got so 28 seconds to go. Looks like a pass, it is a pass. Intercepted by Ostrovsky. He's up to the 10, the 20, the 30. He tries the midfield strike. Look at that son of a run! Yes, bloopers are truly the greatest unintentional comedy of radio and TV. They've happened in every broadcasting category. Let's listen to this classic example from a famous children's radio program. And this is your Uncle Don saying good night. Good night, little kids, good night. We're off? Good, well that ought to hold a little You blew it, you blew it, you blew it. The world's greatest collection of radio and TV's most hilarious mistakes comes a great new movie that will leave you rolling in the aisles. Kermit Schaefer proudly presents Pardon My Blooper, based on his best-selling books and award-winning record albums that have kept millions of blooper fans all over the world laughing for years. For the first time ever, the best of the bloopers now come to life on the motion picture screen. And now before I ask you our first question, what do you do for a living, my good lady? I'm a maid, and I take care of a large family. Uh, how large your family? Let's see. Four boys, three girls, one adult, and one adulteress. <laughs> you blew it. Darn, you blew it. Pardon My Darn, Blooper is an incredible it. movie they said would be oh, impossible to make. But the super you blooper snooper it, himself Kermit you Schaefer has put it all together so everyone can relive the interesting history, heartwarming nostalgia, and rib-splitting comedy of radio and television's greatest goofs, which includes this memorable commercial. August for the best, best bread and rolls. <laughs> oh, good luck. And when you go into the store tomorrow, ask for August Brothers for the best, best bread and rolls <laughs> you have ever tasted. I knew that had to happen one night, friends. Pardon My Blooper is only being shown in movie theaters. Senator Fulbright, 
Do you think that the Viet Cong will honor the peace? Uh, they, as I said already, they have conducted themselves in the last two or three years uh, much more discreet, uh, discreet, discreet, uh, discreet, 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 uh, with greater prudence and discretion than we have, because it is, uh, I, I, I forgot what the question was. <laughs> He blew it, but don't you blow your chance to see Pardon My Blooper. Uncensored, unbleeped, shocking, and provocative virgin, or, or I mean, a version of blooper fun for everyone. You'll agree that it's the craziest f***ing movie you've ever seen. Coming soon to this theater. You blew it, you blew it, you blew it. You, Smokey and the Bandit, Hooper, Cannonball Run, comes the ultimate spectacle. Megaforce, an elite compact fighting unit armed with the most sophisticated weapons ever seen on a movie screen. The mission to preserve freedom and justice and battle the forces of evil. The good guys always win, even in the 80s. Megaforce. The story you're about to see is based on fact. A frustrated burglary squad is in a desperate situation. I mean, we bust them, and then the courts let them go, right? John, what are you talking about? What we do is we set ourselves up as fences. You want the police to buy stolen goods? Exactly. Are you crazy? Why don't we join the mob? Columbia Pictures presents Dom DeLuise Suzanne Plachette Jerry Reed Ossie Davis and the biggest lineup of crooks, schnooks and case histories on record in Hot Stuff the story of the most successful fencing operation ever run under arrest by cops so hold on to your hat your car your portable TV your electric guitar, your transistor radio, your cops, your robbers, your fish, your raft, your hair, your van, your motorcycle, your surfboard, your sanity, Little Orphan Annie in Florida, what is he, I'm a sugar and your sense of humor. <laughs> Because only one person could take a story this true and make it seem so unbelievable. I'm hurting the hunters! Dom DeLuise. Hot stuff. You won't believe it, but it really happened. Hot stuff! Tough times that made tough people. People like Billy the Kid, Calamity Jane, and Jesse James. But there was nobody quite like Sonny and Jed Trigado. In lawless times, they made their own law. Okay, Mr. Holdo, put you have any rules? You got to do things by the rules. Is there something else I could get you, sir? Yep. Your money. This is a hold up. Sonny and Jed. It's about that special kind of love between a man and a woman. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get myself a gun and I'm gonna be just like ya. Oh! Oh! Number 19, now pay me! She's kidding. She fell on her head as a kid. She's not very normal and can be very dangerous. Isn't she funny? <laughs> In the Old West, an outlaw woman stood behind her man. Three steps behind. You want to stay with me? Clarice, if I decide I'm going to keep you with me, 
You've got to walk three steps in back of me. I can put the next bullet between your eyes, but you're not going to die that easy, punk. Come on, let's go. Every time you thought you had them nailed, you got burned. Sonny and Jen. They changed the West a little, and each other a lot. I declare you man and wife from now till it's death when you fish. are parted. Unless you wish something more. Your wallet. Wallet? Yeah, your wallet. Didn't you hear her? And if somebody asks you who robbed you, you said Jed and Sonny Trigado. Sonny and Jed. The reason they call the West wild. <laughs> Hiram Jaffe's world is just like yours. A little unreal. Dolly! You listen to that noise? Move. Some people think move is about moving. Move. Like uh, uh, setting something into motion, Dolly. Something I don't understand. Some people think move is about the system. Breaking down. You lousy kids, no respect for anything. Some people think move is about today's plastic culture. What is that supposed to mean? We believe in a philosophy of joy and laughter, not in self-recrimination and rebuke. No shit. Some people think move is about the battle of the sexes. Doctor, I don't think my husband understands me. Is your wife so Austrian? No, Jewish. <laughs> Ida, break up the glass. <laughs> Isn't that disgusting? I don't know what it is. I haven't made love to Dolly in months. I just can't. God, I, I, I think you really are going crackers. Oh, no, it's the third time. And you better tell me you love me or something. Hey, look at that. You've got green paint spots all over your chest. You've even got it on your... <gasps> oh, that's kinky. You gonna try something funny? None, mate. When we start picking up weird balls, I come for you first. Some people think move is just an entertaining comedy. Who is this? But some people think move is more than that. Damn it! I don't need this. In short, some people think, and some people don't. And some people just move. Move. Jeffy! The movie with a message. Hello, America. This is Miss America. Coonskin's coming. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm in it. This is it. Coonskin. This is really it. Say, Rabbit, if you hit with the big winning plan, now listen to this, now listen to this, now listen to this. Advice from your ace boom man.
boy. You want? And you can take me. <laughs> This is it. This is really it. will rise with the boys for light hellfires. Let's get out of here! Hell's Bells, hip chicks, with an itch for the kind of action it takes a lot of man to scratch. Thing. Cherry, baby, it ain't even broke in yet. Well, neither am I. Now, ain't this nice? What's going on? You take good care of him, honey, just like you did for us. Well, I have the good sense to uh, know when to walk away from a bad part. Well, I can see you've never felt that strong about anyone. You recognize those bikes? They're like men. All the same. What are you planning to do? Get my bike back. You're crazy. There's ten of them. You'd never stand a That's chance. That's my worry. Go on, Buston. When they fight, anything goes. When they love... Please hold me. Everything goes. Wealthy Elger Enders never had the chance to live in a slum, so he bought one. Bonton Heights, that's its official name, will start a trend in urban renewal, Mr. Enders. This neighborhood's going to be very chic, very chic. Let's hope this influx of the uh, beautiful people is the beginning of an inclination. What is this we have? Yeah! I'm Elgar Enders, the new landlord. You follow this right there, monkey. Are you the new landlord? I own this house. I'm the new landlord. You have until the count of three. I am the new landlord. These arrows have been dipped in Fanny's barbecue sauce. Cigarette pops? I'd like you to meet my son. I have it. It's good to meet you. Hi. I'm, uh, I'm Elgar Enders. My name's Lainey. William Jr. Oh, William Jr. Uh, Peter. Are you with Vista? Is this some sort of a new program or something? No, 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 no. That's Elgar. You think I'm white, don't you? This real estate is very important to me. It's the most important thing I've ever done. I'm a Cancerian, and home is very important. You're a Leo. No, Mother, I'm a, I'm a Cancer. When were you born? The roof leaks. The toilet runs all day. I'm going to put it in a patio already. <laughs> My, it's hot in here. It's really cool, Mr. Enders. You awful cute to be a landlord. Oh, no, we're, uh, insecticide. And uh, deodorant. Is that carbonated? Oh! It's just ruthless. It's ruthless. Napalm. You can get it those hops a little better if you take your gloves off. I think there's something that you should know, Mother. What's that, dear? I think I love a girl who's a Negro. Didn't we all go together to see guess who's coming to dinner? No, dear, I'm going to come straight to the point. If you march into this house with an armful of picking in his the best you're going to be able to expect from me will be a swift kick. The Mary's Production Company presents The Landlord. Okay? Okay! Starring Pearl Bailey as March, Diana Sands, Lee Grant, and Bo Bridges as The Landlord. So, I bought this house. I know exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to get chosen for the Olympic team. 
Metro Goldwyn Mayer presents a Brian Forbes film, International Velvet. Will there ever be another horse like him? There might. An unforgettable story in which a new legend is born. It's the fall! About two women separated by a generation. Joan, wake up, wake up quickly. She's gone again. Oh. Sarah! Get off! Come here. You stupid little idiot. What the hell do you think you're doing? Riding. <gasps> you don't show me. You don't ever ride my horse. You don't ever ride my horse without my permission. Do you understand? But joined by the dream they share. But you were like me. You told me. You told me you were only interested in the pie and that nothing else mattered. She wasn't running away from us. She was just running. Her parents are dead, killed in horrifying circumstances. She's shipped off to a strange country, meets an aunt she doesn't know, and an uncle who isn't her uncle, and dumped in some bloody awful school. Well, come on. I know all that, but why can't I talk to her? In every girl is the woman she's destined to become. And in every woman is the girl she used to be. Why did you stop riding? Well, it was the oldest reason in the world. I lost my nerve. We'd exactly call it riding, would we? Hmm? Staying on a horse, perhaps. And uh, tell me, where did you learn what you call riding? Arizona. Oh, in the colonies. Now, when I take somebody, if I take somebody, they come on my terms and they work my way. No nonsense, no temperament, no alibis, and certainly no question of my admitting that I'm ever wrong. And total dedication. I've been chosen. They picked me. I'm riding this time. Congratulations. Thank you. Can I uh, buy you a Coke to celebrate? Sure, sure. So, I'll uh, see you in the stadium tomorrow. And win or lose, I'll take you to dinner. Is that a day? That's a day. What is important in the games is not the winning, but the taking part. Don't do it for me. Do it for your father. He won the Grand National. Go out there and prove how wrong I was. You've got to show him. You'll feel the thrills, share the excitement, and cheer for her in a story of winning and losing, and all the growing up in between. International Velvet, starring Tatum O'Neill, Christopher Plummer, Anthony Hopkins, and Nanette Newman. International Velvet.